Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to X Television. My name is Geta Whale, and tonight we have TF2 to bring you, and we have it on two channels. We'll get to that in a second, but uh, on this, the, uh, the main XTV channel, we are bringing you this match between Dunning Kruger Effect and Menace to Society. It is UGC Platinum Playoffs, and these are the upper bracket finals. Sort of the last stop in the upper bracket before we get to the grand finals. Uh, I said my name is Ghetto Will, and I'm joined by my very good friend. His name is Sigurdur. Sir, are you excited? I'm very excited. You know, each of these teams are guaranteed at least a third spot, but these are basically two of the best teams in North American Platinum, and I'm very excited to see how this plays out on a fast-paced map such as Viaduct. Yes, we are playing on Viaduct, uh, which is good. I always love Viaduct for playoffs. Now, I mentioned, too, where we've got more TF2 going on. We have the lower bracket semifinals. Those are happening on XTV Esports 2. All you do is, if you want to check it out, is add a 2 to this channel name and you can watch them both. Uh, that's between Street Hoops Esports and ET, the Electric Temptations. Uh, but, yeah, we've got Dunning Kruger Effect and Menace to Society, the number 2 and number 4 seed. Z. <laughs> and... Um, it should be good. We've seen many fantastic playoff matches uh, on this map, and this is really a map that can give us very close playoff matches and has over the years, right, Sue? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this is Bidux. It's like pretty much like uh, the number one word you hear on it is overtime, overtime, overtime. It's, it's all about that overtime, and it's a very back-and-forth map, you know. This is a map, though, just to say is that mix-up coming in, uh, has struggled with a lot over the years. They've lost many a championships on this map, so we'll see if they're going to come in here for redemption and prove that they are finally winning on Viaduct, or if DK is going to come in here and uh, put themselves into the finals. Absolutely. Real quick before we go live, I want to talk about a promotion going on. UGC is raffling off over $200 worth in items to hype the grand finals. And so uh, the decals are mostly on the UGC forums. Basically, there are several raffles there where you can win Steam games uh, during the Grand Finals. Uh, you can record videos and all kinds of uh, different things. Um, right now, it's going to be over $200 in items, but they just upped the ante tonight. Uh, tonight, when our cast uh, is starting here now, each entry into their Just Be Yourself raffle is going to add $1 to the raffle um, prize pool, up to $100. So that means that the prizes for this little thing could go up to $300. Uh, if you want to know more about it, I, I have a little bit of details here, but um, just go to the UGC forums, or you can go to the teamfortress.tv forums, and all the details uh, are there. Did you check that out, uh, Sigafir? Are you going to record a video, talk about how the season was to you? Um... Yes, do, you know, absolutely. do you know about that? Did you <laughs> I did, see it? I just know, went I did up act, yesterday. I did actually see it. Uh, yeah. I don't plan on recording a video on it, but it does seem like a pretty cool idea. And, uh, you know, I'm glad to see EGC uh, taking some initiative to try to get involved with the community uh, and give out some prizes, so that's pretty cool. Yeah, they want people to write articles or give predictions. Uh, there's keys for prizes, there are Steam games, or you can just talk about your season. You can give ideas for UGC. Uh, all kinds of things, you'll be entered into those raffles. So go to the UGC forums and check it out while we're waiting here for this to start, or check it out during halftime or later tonight. But yeah, during uh, the, the cast here, um, yeah, everyone who enters the Just Be Yourself raffle is going to add one buck to the raffle. So uh, go do that. Awesome. But we are just waiting to go live here for uh, this match. It should be a very good one. How about we talk about the teams a little bit? And I think kind of the stories on each side, Dunning-Kruger effect, they're obviously a much newer platinum team than MTS. Uh, and so uh, they, they've had sort of a fantastic rise, and their story has been fantastic, and they can certainly solidify their legacy with a win here today. MTS, they have always sort of been, unfortunately, they've had the reputation of always the bridesmaid, never the bride. They've always sort of make it into the finals, and they just come that close and uh, have heartbreak. Would you agree as we go live here? What, uh, what are you looking for tonight? Uh, I'm looking for M MTS to uh, basically show up for once and actually win the game. Uh, DK, I played against them in a scrim earlier. They looked really strong. So as we're coming out here to this mid fight, uh, I'm just expecting a really great battle as it looks like the Blue Demon getting out the first stickies as we're starting to uh, get this mid fight going, but no early kills right away. 
Absolutely, and well, one thing to shout out, some people might have noticed already, is Marissa already got a pick on the demo man, so that'll be, uh, that'll hurt. And we're uh, having problems, we're going without plugins here this evening. Uh, a recent TF2 update made all our fun little plugins uh, not work, and so just be aware of that, but we're still going to bring the action, obviously, there just won't be all the bells and whistles necessarily. First cap of this is going to go down to uh, Blue, and that is uh, the team called MTS. Yeah, they did a really good job just kind of slowly aggressing across the point. Marissa with the big snipe on the demo man. That gave a great advantage uh, to MTS to just kind of start using that and start taking ground off that. And so now we're going to see our first Uber exchange here coming up shortly here as DK is just kind of taking their time trying to just see what they want to do. But they are losing players in all this time that they are taking. So I'm not really sure what they're holding on for. Finally, it looks like they are going to start to walk across the point. Tell you one player that's going ham already is Marissa. She's already got five points, and uh, snipers on this map, boy oh boy, they can lock down basically half of a map and uh, sort of make life really hard for uh, for for everyone. Both medics have Uber right now. Blue gets popped out first, and that was a great force. And Heavy's gonna try to run in there and cover ground, but uh, nothing off of that Uber. And DK here getting an amazing Uber. They're gonna come and easily cap the point now. And TS are going to have faster respawns, but that's DK's first cap of the match so far. Yeah, and that shows you MTS's playstyle that they like to do on this map. It's a very passive hold. That's DK play that so perfectly that they slowly walked up onto the point that they just kind of slowly took ground. They took what MTS gave them. Marissa with a nice snipe on Xan there, taking down the demo man for DK. So that's going to be able to MTS to push off that. But MTS really needs to have that aggression when they're holding the point, just like they have the aggression right now, chasing down the medic, going through uh, main right now, but the medic is going to get away and uh, just barely holding on. But the soldier buff on the medic gets one rocket, gets a second rocket, but Ooh. not going to go down. Meta way up with 60 HP. Yeehaw, and so uh, Blue owns the point. They're gonna, I guess, come forward and try to get a bit of this forward hold on uh, a little bit. Uh, Sniper is still trying to make something happen. I see Sniper up there on China area, as it's called, trying to make something happen. This is the summer fun season, so we have Mr. Alpha, of course, playing demo, and uh, he's normally known for playing scout, and he's trying to create some space and create some spam here, but has to back off now as DK take this point back and uh, a lot of back and forth here right off the bat. No, uh, nobody's gonna lay down just yet. Yeah, again, this is MTS. Oh, actually, Harbour, I'm sorry, he almost got caught. He looked like he's a little bit out of position, but oh, big trap. Zan taking down Alpha, who's trying to cross the point. The Uber basically gets popped in the soldier out of uh, just uh, being afraid. Harbour actually getting caught in, getting butter knife down by Broom Pata Pata, or also known as Deer. <laughs> and uh, he's going to go down. Heavy gets taken out as well. And DK just cleaning up. What a great trap out of Zan to just take out that push. And uh, MTS, they're going to be even time now. And this is where they start to struggle is when they're down. You what know, was it? Vroom Pata Pata? I'm new. Yeah, that, that was his old name. Me. That's his, okay. he, That's his like third iteration <laughs> of his name. Yeah. I see. Very interesting. Well, uh, at any rate... Uh, Broom Pata Pata or not, uh, we've got a hell of a first round underway here, Sigafu, and I think that sometimes on this map, I think the mistake that some people fall into is they play too passive, they give up a quick round, we only played a four on this map, and so if you give up one round, oh, as the medic goes down, that was Medui going down to a big stab by Akuma, and that's a drop, ladies and gentlemen, ring one up. Ding 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 ding, ding 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 ding. <laughs> yeah, ding ding ding, and so that'll help a lot because right now Red owns the point, but uh, all of MTS are up, and they got to make something happen here. As we've got a minute away for DK to take this, but I'm looking forward to a very close finish. Yeah, they are able to get that Uber across the point. DK is wisely backed up. They're not going to lose too many people. Maybe the Pyro. He's a little bit caught in, but actually, just as they say that, Zan goes down to a headshot by Marissa. No demo man again for DK. They are low health. If you just look across the board, all of them struggling. Squid is running forward, and he actually picks off the sniper, which is very good because Axiomatic can go absolutely huge. Here comes the respawn. Zen and actually, oh. yes, getting caught in, losing three oh, right no. there, down to only two. Marissa and Squid are the only one up, and make that Squid with 11 HP. And I don't think 11 oh, HP is good boy. enough for uh, taking out an 8K. Oh, and MTS <laughs> now on the back ropes here with 30 seconds on the clock. You know, some people would say that 11 HP is 10 more than you need. But, uh, yeah, you would know something <laughs> about 8Ks on Viaduct, wouldn't you, sir? At any rate, we've uh, we've got right now Blue uh, need to make something happen here. 
for MTS, you do not want to drop this first round. I'd be interested actually to know stats on teams that drop the first round on Viaduct, but I don't think it's uh, that promising. Yeah, it generally isn't, and just look at this MTS losing so many players before they even had a chance to take back the point. Six seconds left in the clock, Groom Pata Pata, sorry, I just keep calling him that for some reason. <laughs> I had 3k today, right there, Squid Spam Fest, and I didn't see who else, but uh, Deer going absolutely huge, Zan going big as well, 26 points, even with his deaths. Uh, yeah, DK, DK coming in big. So let's watch Zan as he coming out here uh, to the midpoint. You know, if that first long range sticky probably connected that as they don't see the Devil Man, other Devil Man peeking up forward and just exchanging that spam across the point, but MTS taking a lot of damage early on their scout and spy. Given big credit actually to, I'm watching Velocity doing some uh, reflecting action, getting rid of some of Metaway that spam. Metaway down to Sap. Ooh, Metaway's down! <laughs> that's not. That's uh, not the kind of night that Metaway wants to start off here. Certainly uh, not showing strong. Uh, this is the upper brackets, and you sort of have to lay it out on the line here. MTS are going to take this first cap, uh, oh boy, we're looking at what, 85% Uber on the other side, and so certainly MTS are going to be in very good condition here, uh, Harbs is a very smart medic, and is going to probably play it safe here and only pop when they need to. Still yeah. uh, going big is Marissa, I've noticed Marissa really shutting off big areas of that map, and I feel like DK has to do a lot more to pressure Marissa, I'm going to be watching to see if they have some strategy to deal with that. Yeah, I'm watching Axiomatic right now. I mean, he's the one who needs to make a play uh, with Metaway just slowly building Uber. DK uh, is trying to take a little bit of ground, a little bit. They're just kind of holding this cliff area really passively. Look at Akuma's position, though, right now. Just on that overhang, he's ready to get a step. He's uh, getting the heavy, actually. Nice stab on Carl there. That's going to slow the push down. Metaway actually down to uh, 80 HP. Not sure what hit him there, but he's a little bit worried of dodging that roller as they're just starting to get that 100%. And Har um, Harblu still holding on to that Uber around the point. But again, this is what I'm talking about. Oof. That passive play out of MTS. Actually, Maddox picked up a big headshot on Alpha. That's the demo, and that'll help a lot. The Uber here, uh, the Ubers are getting exchanged. We're going to see who can get the better of this once the Ubers expire. Looking like uh, keeping Skyroll up. Skyroll a real hurt, but still locking down a lot of that. Now he's going to have to hold back, though, because I mean, his sentry is up. Sniper's watching as well. So both teams, I think, just sort of jockeying for position right now, seeing which one can move and take the most ground. But it looks like MTS are going to sort of crowd the point here. Yeah, and actually during that, I don't know what happened with Metaway's positioning. He got really aggressive across the point, and then as soon as he tried to back up, and actually just as I'm saying this, Harblue goes back down. And so uh, that's going to give Metaway, who did go down in that exchange, just a slight new reaction. It's probably going to be about 30. Oh, wait. oh no! Nope. Down he goes again. <laughs> Remedy coming up big. And Caster's that's like, curse. Yeah, right there. And that's going to give Harblu just a very, very slight advantage. As DK is now on the back. Heals with oh, minutes left on the point. And down goes Carl right there as well. Speaking of backs, I'm wondering if Zanz is hurting right now. He has been definitely. Oh, yeah. uh, Carry oh, we got big picks all over. Zango's down as well. There's a big stab on Harblu, which I missed. I uh, don't sure if, we're, if we got it on camera, but uh, my and lord. And Squid just got away. I'm Alpha sorry. down again. <laughs> we got frags all over the place here, and these teams are treating this very seriously. They're not going to wait around here. It sort of balls out from both sides. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'm sorry to be interrupting so much. But there's just, as you said, so many big plays going on. Medics yep. cannot seem to stay alive for the last minute here. As uh, finally DK does capture the point, the time is slowly ticking off for them, but MTS has such a significant lead on time. All they do need to do is just have a good push and capture this. Harlu actually down to 45 HP as DK is going to re-aggress on this point, but it's not going to matter as MTS is going to retake this point Ooh. in 50 seconds, ticking off the clock. DK needs to get aggressive. Give that cap to Skyroll. As Skyroll walked in with a full ball, 450, and just sort of carry that entire point himself before going down and uh but we got another pick it's alpha going down squitter went down as well we're looking at four players up on mts and it seems like so far in these big sort of important situations mts are just losing way too many players is that what you're seeing too yeah i mean they just seem to be dying needlessly i'm on the axio cam right now because harblu is at least doing a good job of staying alive he's been picked like a couple times but medway has gone down more here comes actually the uber in from mts Again, all they gotta do is they just gotta get that capture time on. They have such a significant lead. It's important that they get the capture time. But Alpha actually going really low. Cyril actually goes down, and DK has not lost a single player yet. Yet, four, MTS has lost four. 
in that exchange, MTS is just really struggling when they don't have control. Like they just they just don't know how to control that point, and DK just doing a really good job using that to their advantage, obviously. And I'm noticing Sigafu that MTS are actually they're they're very adaptable, and I'm seeing them adapt to their play style. And it says a lot about Deer and how well he's playing. I'm seeing Caxi almost have to babysit Harblue's back uh, because there's just been so many big stabs and. You know, that's, it's good because it protects against the spy, but it sort of takes Katsy out of doing other things. But um, MTS trying to adapt to see if they can do something about it at least, which is good to see. Yeah, and MTS actually really good job right there. They actually lost their heavy in demo during that push, but Marissa getting some nice picks, taking down Zan himself, uh, which I think is really a key for MTS this game, is just keeping Zan down and then Axiomatic as well. Uh, this has been a sniper battle for sure. But see, just look at MTS's hold right now. Obviously, they don't have Uber. I understand why they got me. But look at this passive hold. Like, it's continuing. Look at how much DK is walking up for this. Uh, the pop is out for DK. The counter pop is out for MTS. Here they come. DK is backing up across the point. Cassie just doing work, pushing them across the point. But three seconds left in the coin. They need to get that capture time, DK, or they will lose this round. But all the frags! All the frags coming out MTS's way. And. This might be the first round, but here comes a soldier, an engineer, and scout. They're getting on the point. Only Marissa, Marissa, uh, sorry, it looks like the engineer went down. The scout is on the point. Scout versus Marissa. Scout obviously wins that. Remedy is up, but wow, DK has to hold this. Oh boy, so uh, the entire MTS team almost is going to walk out of spawn. just like it's the start of the round, and... Uh... I mean, yeah, you, you kind of nailed it. They've uh, been sort of fighting uphill, pardon the pun, for much of this round and the first round. Uh, we've got 35 seconds away, roughly, from DK ticking us away. But look at what we got. We have four players up for MTS. And it, I don't want to call it wow. bleeding, as down goes Harbs, down goes Akuma. But my lord, they've, uh, I don't know, they've got to they've gotta make their lives a little longer sick. Yeah, that was just, well, th that started out with a big stab by Deer. He took out Alpha before he even got on the point. Zan used that to his advantage, peeking across, putting down a lot of spam. we got six seconds left on the clock. Here comes the, they come out to the point, but Wrangle's sentry gun finally, actually a quick fix out of Metaway here. Didn't even spot that. MTS throws everybody at the point, and everybody oh, is dying left and right. Only two alive. Scout doing what he can. Wow, dude. Nothing, and DK. From the brink, takes it to the second round. One more round to half, and uh, MTS. I mean, they need this. They need this round just, just for that, just for that victory to have something behind them. I'm looking at Alpha. I want to see Alpha really own this mid, and it's going to be very important here. You know, the mid not as important on a cough map, but if Alpha can sort of get this DK team low at the very least with some of this spam and back them off, we can at least get the first cap and sort of work on forward hold or get something going already squitter is down and akuma are down uh alpha goes down as well it was a big stick by zan who continues to sort of carry his team i'm not saying he's the only one performing well but boy oh boy he's 58 points yeah he's going to absolutely ham today i mean that's the thing is you know when they lost mangachu i wasn't sure if dk was going to be the same team but Zan, I mean, he has stepped up and he has performed hugely. I think he's one of the big reasons why DK has been doing so good this year as they are in the upper bracket finals. And here comes a pop out of MTS Brilliant. and a counter pop uh, back out, out of DK as uh, MTS trying to get out. But Elf actually caught in here and he should go down to the heavy. And Alpha just cannot find himself to stay alive. Woo, we've got five players on DK that just went down all in a row. There was a double snipe, it looked like, out of that uh, machina of Marissa, and suddenly we've got seven DK players dead. So that'll work. Coordinated frags and focus fire, that'll uh, that'll do it more times than not. As yeah, so we actually have almost a full respawn, actually it might be a full respawn out of DK, but this is right here. You just killed the entire DK team. And look at, they're just starting now to yeah. take a forward hold. They've like, this is faster. where MTS is going wrong. Like, when you have a forward hold in Viaduct, you need to transition so quickly to that hold because the time for respawn is so fast to the team who does not hold the point. And now MTS finally doing, for the first time, something a little bit more aggressive. They are at a slight uber disadvantage, but again, they're backing up. Now backing DK up. is going to walk across the point. It's, I don't know. Well, it was smart because they knew that an Uber was probably coming in. This is a very smart team, this MTS team, and they were probably sensing it. Spy was in, and the Uber got four. Soldier behind there as well, looks like. 
Uh, boy, I'm gonna wonder if MTS is just shell shocked here, Sigafu. Does it kind of take time to catch your breath and sort of plan your strategy when you get off to such a bad start like this? Yeah, I mean, it's hard to adjust. I mean, this is like, especially, you know, MTS's model, like, they've been playing this map for so long, they just have a certain play style. Like, I recognize it instantly. And they just have a hard time, like, I think it's just because how hard who wants to play the map, you know? Their leader, and actually, the heavy goes down there to a nice stab. I think it's hard time for them adjusting to this. And DKs, are, I played them yesterday. They're a really smart team on this map. They played really well around each other. And, you know, MTS, I mean, here again, like, you know, even this is like, put some cap time on. You know, you're going down players, there's nobody around the point. Like, you can get some cap time on there. But uh, I, I don't know. I just, just they're struggling so hard, and this is almost getting a little bit painful to watch because they just can't seem yeah. to get anything together. MTS bleeding a lot. I just saw Marissa just kind of standing behind Rock, and uh, players getting picked off one by one, and it's not happening on the other side. I'm not seeing DK running in willy nilly and just having people die, other than, say, the soldier maybe or those sack kind of classes. Uh, just sticking together and just playing a better team game, I think, is Dunning-Kruger effect right now, and they've got 55 seconds away from taking this into half. Yeah, and I think the interesting thing, too, is that, you know, we don't talk about it too much on Koth maps, but, you know, winning the mid-fight is not as important in Koth a lot of the times, actually, because MTS has won two mid-fights this game, and yet they have yet to have a round to their name. Uh, and again, DK just controlling the point, being aggressive enough, kind of countering, letting MTS push on and then collapsing on them. I mean, DK is playing like a very, very close to perfect game on this map. Like they're doing exceptionally well. And here comes MTS, their final push, Remedy coming in over the top, forcing Medaway to pop. MTS pops as well. Actually, they're much, much worse pop. Did not realize they popped so early. And here comes Zan taking down the demo man with the help of the scout. Others getting focused down, only four alive for MTS. Make that just a handful alive. The respawns are coming in for MTS, but six seconds left on the clock. And even if you throw your bodies on the point, still not gonna do anything. And this is gonna be 3-0 going into halftime for DK. Unbelievable result, and uh, I don't know. We, uh, we didn't ask for Preds in the chat at the start of this one, but I don't know how many people would have predicted this going down. I mean, everyone knows what MTS are capable of on this viaduct map. Uh, you know, we've seen them play it for years and years. They, you know, they won their viaduct week this season. They beat Dunning-Kruger this season as well in that matchup with these lineups, basically, on steel. But uh, really, DK just playing a perfect game today and sort of really pressuring uh, pressuring MTS to, to, to act and be better than them. And so far, they haven't been up to the challenge, I don't think. What have you been seeing? Yeah, I mean, actually, I... I wanted to do predictions beforehand because I actually did want to say I thought D DK was going to take this 4-0 uh, because yesterday I played them and we actually, so my team that I played them with, we outfragged them, out damaged them and we lost 0-3 the first half. Wow. Like, I mean like that's how good, that was just because their coordination, their strategy, just, they, it was superior to like, what, even though we were out fragging them, out DMing them, we were still losing and I'm looking at the stats right now. Unbelievable. I, Zan currently yeah. has close to 12,000 damage. The demo man on the other team, a little bit under 8,000. That's 685, 4... 686 damage per minute for Zan and a 438 KAD. That is absurdly high. Beastly. Like 500 DPM is like really good. Like that's probably like a B plus. This is like an A plus 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 would re five with a seller again. Like he is going absolutely crazy this game. Oh boy, and so uh, certainly uh, three, th three rounds in a row, um, I, I don't know what to say here. I mean, uh, obviously all the pressure now is on MTS. They're gonna make, uh, be making a quick exit from this upper bracket. And uh, I wanna remind you guys, we have another match going on on XTV Esports 2 right now. It is Street Hoops Esports and ET. Which you, you can watch after we're in? done with this one. Yeah, this might be done very quickly here. Uh, Unfortunately, now certainly, uh, yeah, boy, uh, what else can we say here, Sikafu? It's been very clear cut so far. Well, the other thing I'd like to point out, yeah, looking at the stats too, is like Marissa has been at least the one who's been keeping up uh, kind of on par with Axiomatic. Um, the other thing too is that, you know, you look at Zan's KAD, like obviously it's going to be huge because of his damage output, but still, like his deaths are fairly low compared to his team, only having eight so far. I mean, he's had a four. 
what, a 4.38 KD, which is, like, just incredibly solid, you know? And I think coming into this next round, I think what MTS is maybe talking to themselves in halftime, talking about what they can adjust. I mean, if they're not going to adjust their game plan, you know, have Marissa charge up those body shots, purely go for Zan Akuma. Maybe Meta Ways in the prime target. Maybe try to take down Zan. Maybe he's a little bit easier to pick off, you know? Uh, maybe kind of different stuff like that. Maybe we have Remedy bomb in more on the Demo Man himself, you know? Uh, just try to get some spam down, really focus that Demo Man down, and then try to use the other elements of your team to work it. Yeah, absolutely. And so uh, an important uh, important moment here, an important half. A uh, little bit of a server hiccup here, looks like, possibly. Yeah, we might be getting a crash. I'm getting... Let me see what's going on. Um... So we yeah. may have a, a reset of the server. We may have to uh, go back into the server. So uh, maybe a, maybe a tactical crash. I don't know. Who knows? But um, at any rate, uh, we will be going here in just a few minutes. It seems like the server we were on is uh, either shutting down or restarting. Uh, one thing I wanted to talk about is that if you guys haven't looked at the UGC brackets yet, that's something you can look at on the UGC website. And the loser of this match, if it does turn out to be MTS, if... Uh, certainly we've seen crazier comebacks than this, but they're they're not out completely. They will go on and they'll face whoever the winner of the Street Hoops ET match is. It's going on right now this evening. And they will still have a, a chance to, to make it to that grand final, but uh, we've got to get through this here first. Uh, I don't have uh, results. I haven't been looking at the uh, Street Hoops uh, ET. Have you seen anything out of that, Sig? Uh, I have not. I'll see if I can pull up some stats. Actually, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, um, one thing actually I thought was interesting, I just wanted to say too as well, uh, I was kind of curious looking at the medic stats from last game, um, and each medic actually popped even number of Ubers, so both were at 9, and the healing rate was only 2,000 in the favor of, uh, of Metaway, so just a little bit more, I mean, it's probably like what, like... Uh, like 5% more heals out of Metaway, but still, like, that's not that drastic compared to the frag and damage difference. So obviously both medics are having a pretty good game, keeping alive about the same amount and, you know, getting off the same amount of Ubers. So it's really just, like, the players stepping up to the plate, you know? There's, as much as we saw the medics being picked, uh, just kind of, uh, the players are stepping up to the plate, as we are, and the server is back up, by the way, if you have not tried to reconnect. Ah, okay. Uh, a little bird is telling me that in the, uh, the the current stats right now for the Street Hoops ET match, Street Hoops up 2-1. I don't know how recent that is, but uh, you can see that on our second channel. That'd be so brutal for ET to go out in, like before placing two seasons in a row after like topping the board. Such a fantastic yeah, season, obviously. <laughs> uh, it's it, it happens. It's UGC, anything can happen, Sigafu, and it's summer. You know what that means. Summer fun. The summer, summer fun season, as it's called, yeah. Summer loving. It's not like summer loving from Greece. Yeah, it's like summer loving, <laughs> except like loving your. I don't know who can say. <laughs> summer loving. We're uh, yeah, getting back into the server here. We're gonna see uh, see how close we are to uh, getting going. So close that log. But uh, at any rate, uh, I mean, I see a lot of differences among these stats. I mean, obviously, deer we've been watching has been way outperforming Akuma. Some people say that Akuma is the best spy. Or they've said at various times that Akuma has been the best around. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? I mean, Deer, obviously, boy. I mean, if he's not a household name now, uh, he should be. Yeah, I mean, Deer, I, I don't know. I think I, I, I'm still a person who says the best spy to ever play the game was Pulse. And to me, it's like never really been that close. I think Akuma is an exceptional spy. I think Akuma has the best ambassador game. In Why do I hearing the starting sounds? Oh, because they haven't run the config yet. There we go. Okay. Ah, there we go, yeah. Um, so, but, you know, I think that Akuma is really solid. I think one of the uh, the things that happens with Akuma is he can tend to have too much of a run-up to teams. So Akuma can be, like, shut down. Streaky? Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, like, basically kind of is, like, a question of, like, uh, how much the team's checking for him. Which, I mean, is, like, I think the case for, like, every spy, but I think in particular with Akuma that I think he's a really good, like, he's an exceptional spy, but then he has exceptional aim, which is what kind of makes him different. Whereas I think Deer is the opposite, where about the picks, he's all about the stabs. And actually, kind of the funny thing that is, uh, the kind of joke about Deer, is that he actually, when he's shooting a sniper, he'll actually shoot you once and then just butter knife you the rest of the way because his aim's so unreliable. <laughs> That's and cool, yeah. And so, like, it's, like, freaking annoying. Like, I've been butter knifed by him countless times because that's his playstyle. But Deer is also one of those spies who's, like, so incredibly, like, 
he either gets a, a lot of picks or he gets a very small amount. And because, and that's why I don't think you hear his name too much, because either he makes a huge impact or he makes absolutely none. And Akuma is a much more consistent uh, player. Well, if he doesn't get picks with his knife, he's going to get picks with his gun. You know, and that's why you kind of like see him and he gets those crazy headshots. So I think they're both good in their own ways, and I think they both are like top level spies. And Akuma very well might be the top one uh, currently playing the game. It's hard to say, you know, spies are so kind of like, there's so many different elements you have to take into account, but obviously uh, very good all around. I'm just happy that I'm casting with someone who recognizes and gives props to Pulse, my man, because uh, he uh, he doesn't get mentioned. And some people who are newer to Highlander have only seen him play just w seen him play what engineer or whatever. But he is a scary, very scary. Scary. Spy. He absolutely. I've played playing on this map especially. Like oh my God, he'll like he'll trick stab you with his eyes closed. But uh, he's not playing today anyway. But shout outs to Pulse at any rate. So uh, if you are just joining us here on XTV this evening, uh, this is the preparation for the second half between Dunning-Kruger Effect and Menace to Society. Guess who's winning? It's DK, and it's 3-0, as the Europeans would say. And so MTS, a lot of pressure, but they've had a long time here. We've had a very long halftime. And so they've had certainly time to sort of talk it out, and I mean, Sigafu, I've got to think they're going to come out though and just play it the way they've always played it. Would you agree with that? Stick to the strategy, or do you think I, they change I, it up? Here? I don't think they're going to change. If I know MTS, they're not going to change, and there's a good chance they might come out in the third place if they keep doing that. They need to learn to adapt. They need to learn to adapt on this map. Uh, they've been doing good on these mid fights. Actually, let me get on the uh, Alpha cam here. Yep, I'm on Alpha too. Let's see what he does, and I. Watched last as well. Alpha really has to dominate this mid, and it seems like, I mean, there's been no advantage over Zan. We talked about Zan, who's been such a monster. And so I think it's going to be up to MTS here to maybe get a big pick. They need to get a big headshot, and actually, they already did. They got Axiomatic down, which is great. And Carl down as well. Uh, oh boy, so that'll help a lot. Marissa going pretty big with two big headshots, and, uh, you know, now oh. that he knows. Oh my gosh! Roller a direct pipe. On Was that a direct pipe? Wow. Either so, a roller or a pipe. I didn't catch it, but my I think lord. Maybe uh, one of each. Yeah. So uh, that'll help out uh, DK's cause. A lot, but what I was just going to say is that certainly now with Marissa out there on the field, she can shut down a lot of this map. Yeah, and here we got Metaway holding on. Oh, dropped no! by Remedy <laughs> over the Remedy. top. Metaway holding on to it with dear life, but Pop and don't drop it, brothers. Second drop of the game. Obviously, they're winning, but here we come in. Is MTS going to use this to their advantage? Trying to get some aggression across the point. And actually, Carl getting taken out by Marissa doing work today. And Metaway just coming back up, but MTS still is not pushed across point. Oh boy, that was pretty big. Uh, Remedy with a very big pick there, and I guess, uh, I don't know, chalk it up to a little bit of Sixes experience, whatever you want to call it. Looks like here now uh, MTS trying to get this cat back. They did have it for 20 seconds. But uh, Marissa's still going big. I mean, uh, Marissa making this, trying to make this her half, but goes down there to a butter knife from Deer. She had the razor back, and a butter knife still did it, so go figure. Yeah, it's that, I want to see her, like, turn around one time, you know, force a fake backstab, you know, and then shoot him. <laughs> but here we come in, uh, DK again. See, this is kind of the MTS. They need to start spamming them. Look at how much ground MTS is taking for free. Here comes the pop. Actually, Metaway actually caught in here a little bit. No, he is actually going to be able to get out as the Pyro is going to blast him back and not be able to take any ground. And now that's an Uber down for MTS and gives him a big advantage, about 50% to DK as Zan's doing just that, getting across the point, putting down the spam, and DK is going to take this back without even having to pop Uber. One thing that I think is important here is we're noticing that the medics are going down, I would say, quite a bit, and so, you know, one thing that I don't think ever gets really mentioned on a cast, uh, shoutouts to the heavies throwing their sandwiches into the dispensers for doing the heals. MTS has their little corner here that they're hiding in. That's a pretty standard spot to hold, as we have the blue uber coming in, but, uh, I don't know, some of those ancillary heals, they can, uh, they can come in handy, they can save a life here and there. This forward mini sentry here, by the way, that, uh, it's been set up by Josh. He's blocking off uh, much of the uh, much of the map. Look at this. Just slows little you down a mini. little bit having to come through. Here actually comes a soldier over the top coming out to Harp. Luke gets one rocket onto him, but he's going to get protected and stay alive. Some rollers are being flying the way of Harblue. 
but uh, nothing's connecting. They opt to pop early since Axiomatic is actually he's currently down, so he probably could have waited a little bit on that. Uh, the scout is going to take down the Pyro, chasing down Zan all the way in the corner, and Squid actually taking him out. And uh, wow, great job by NTS there, and great job by Squid to just take down Zan again. We talked about that in the kind of in-between round that Zan needs to be focused a lot more, and looks like MTS is doing just that. I'm uh, I'm looking at the soldiers, and I'm noticing. Uh, I want to apologize in advance to Twitch chat for this one, but I'm, I kind of would give the edge to Remedy in terms of picking his spots and uh, picking his bombs, bombing in and getting you know med or important classes. Slight edge over Aegis, aka Aces Gamer. Uh, although uh, he just comes in and does a little bit of work there. Uh, DK yeah. got shut down there, sorry. Absolutely, I was watching it happen as well. I get off on these points and I miss all this action, Sigafu. I gotta just stop talking, you know? It's TF2, you're supposed to get off the point, that's the whole point. <laughs> right. yeah. As actually Metaway went down there, I didn't see exactly what happened in the kill feed, but Metaway went down there in the whole push with DK. And MTS, they have to win three straight, that's the only way they can put this game into overtime. And they're doing a pretty good job of it right now, 40 seconds left on the clock. Harblue with the 50% uber advantage. It's real a question of, you know, can they hold on to this final point? They got pretty close in the second game of the first round. So let's see what happens here is uh, Kuma is getting in position, but I think he's might be able to get caught out, but DK trying to take ground again. But this hold I'm very impressed with by MTS. And I don't know if they favor this half of the map or what, but uh, in comes Harbs, who was just sort of building up on Cliff, which... I don't know why they weren't doing that all match long up to this point, uh, Sigafu. We can talk about that in a second, but they are going to uh, sort of clean up whatever they can here. Spam Fest with a nice shoddy pick. Marissa with a, uh, a little little uh, erasure of the sentry gun. And uh, I don't know, they're going to maybe give this one back up here uh, as the Uber comes in, obviously. Harb's going to save his own life. Uh, I don't know. I, uh, Harb's staying alive. Uh, I don't know why they haven't been playing more safe like this, though. I mean, why not a cliff push up to this point, or a cliff hold up to this point for MTS? Well, they've, they've done a kind of like where Harblue stands on the cliff. They've done that one time. But, you know, right now, they're probably just like, okay, because like they, they can let them take the point. As long as Harblue doesn't go down here, look at all they have to do is have one successful push. DK had to use the Uber to take back the point, which they did. So now Harblue has Uber advantage if he stays alive, which he did. So now all they got to do is just repush, and here comes MTS not even risking it, jumping across the point at Alpha going all the way across. Remedy as well. They're getting the frags. Metaway actually went down there right away. Carl's going to get picked off. The focus fire is easy. real. The and wash. here comes a soldier, and wow. Deer came in at the last second there to try to break up the party, but uh, MTS holding it, uh, holding it down, and we're looking at 3-1 now for DK. Still match point for DK. Uh, I don't know. MTS playing pretty... Pretty much by the book there, but it, it took them a long time, and they've almost thrown away this whole match by now, Sigafu. Do you think they can do it again, or will DK adapt and play against it? Well, Marissa went down there right away. That was a big. That Oof. gave him a big lead early on, and, and down Squid, goes and everybody. Alpha, and Cassie. <laughs> the and, end. Yeah, hopefully Harblue can stay alive here. MTS holding kind of passively back around their main area. But yeah, I mean, last game, I'm just looking at the stats right now real quick. Xan only did 100 more damage in Alpha, so they're right there with each other, basically even. And that's what you need to see happen for the rest of this game. Um, you know, Metaway's going to get this Uber uh, ahead of time. MTS is going to repush, but this is where MTS struggles. This is where they've had trouble, is when they do not control the point, can they retake it efficiently? They've got Uber's the Uber, but Harm's going to spy on his back, and where is Katsy? Katsy's been babysitting his back for a lot of the match, but here they go, kind of an early pop. Kuma on Metaway. Just a scout. Uh, this Uber, there, there's nobody really here. There are no bodies to Uber. They finally... Oh, there was a big drop, which I missed off uh, the screen. Yeah, Kuma got himself set up with a nice stab on the balcony area. He just ran down. The Pyro was not checking his back at that moment. And Metaway just got taken down, being focused on the stab. Really good use of distraction by Kuma there. And that's going to give the Uber advantage. Not only did it take that point back, but they now have a 30% Uber advantage to hold the point with. And actually, are they having a forward hold finally? Are they doing it? They're kind of doing it. I guess Squid is up by himself. But this is what I'm talking about. It's like they had, they took the Uber, they killed most of the players. They could go up and hold on Cliffside, you know? Because what they're going to do is they're probably going to back up off a point as soon as DK shows any aggression. I'm like, that's not an efficient use of an, a forward hold. Like, I want to see yeah. them have a chance at this game, but they just keep playing, like, so passively. Like, as soon as they get any pressure on them. I've been watching Harblue a lot. He's tagged up his dumb Glaceon, uh, if we don't have aliases. And uh, 
He's been playing afraid, I think, Sigafu. He's been playing very scared. There were a lot of picks. He had a spy on his back just then. He didn't even know, but I think that might be affecting the team a little bit. He's been very skittish, and when he's on his own, when he's not, you know, flanked, say, by Katsy, his own pyro, he's just... He seems really kind of nervous to me, which is not characteristic of Harblue. He's usually a very confident player. Finally pops off his Uber. Let's see who gets the best of this one now, taking the demo. Wow, really, around a little bit. really good flashing out of Harblue right there. He saved his heavy, back to the demo, back to the scout. Yeah. So many catches. Har oh, Metaway down to 1 HP. Finally does go down to the pistol by Squid there. And Spies again, it's going to give Harblue is going to be staying alive and going to have a nice uber advantage, probably around 40 to 50% here as Medway is just getting back up. I think that a lot of this is on the pick classes of DK. You can't say enough about how important pick classes are, the sniper, the spy. They have been sort of underperforming, I think, in this second half thus far. Deer has been very much shut down, and I give a lot of that credit to Katsy, the pyro on red for that. Um, but yeah, I mean, I haven't seen a whole lot out of Axiomatics, really not having strong... Uh, I mean, he's top of the scoreboard, certainly, but uh, I don't know. Uh, DK has got to figure something out here, because when you win a couple rounds in a row, you can sort of uh, you can start to build on it and steamroll along a little bit. Yeah, and the other thing I see MTS struggling with a little bit is the Alpha just keeps... I think he's getting a little bit ahead of his team. And I don't know if that's mis like a misplay out of an Alpha or a misplay out of his team not being forward with them. He kind of just keeps getting caught out there. And actually, here comes the Uber out of MTS and the counter Uber out of DK as DK is using their Pyro to push them back across the point. This is where MTS has struggled when the with these counter pushes, but Alpha just can come straight back on. But Deer getting a nice stab on Scout, who is trying oh to cross boy. the point. This Soldier is back on the map. Oh, boy. Kills oh, my himself. God. How does Harblue stay up there? And now he's got going to try to get a... Gotta get a little axe uh, of a question on the spy. How did he stay up? What was that? When he just high the about... soldier and then just walked away <laughs> like nothing happened. But at any rate, uh, boy, oh boy, it's uh, a very small uber advantage that Harblue keeps, but it is uh, an advantage nonetheless. I don't think it'll matter because both teams should probably pop off at the same time as long as there are no medic picks. Everyone is up for both sides, and uh, another semi-forward hold. Out of MTS. Uh, if they take the cliff, it is a little better for a lot of these classes. And now Harblue might get forced here. Harblue does get forced, but they popped around the same time. And again, let's see who gets the better of this. DK been getting very good Ubers so far, but Harb doing a good job flashing as well. Just sort of backing up now, though. Zan down to 23 HP. Actually, there he goes down. And actually, MTS has oh, now boy. lost a single player in that exchange. This is exactly what they needed to have a chance. 20 seconds left on the clock. That's going to be enough time for actually one to two more pushes. I guess probably just one push as respawns are coming up here. And look at this aggressive position out of Skyrolla. I think yep. we're going to see a flank heavy play, and it's going to go big. But MT or, sorry, DK bled a lot of players in that push. They needed to pull back. Seven seconds left on the clock. Three. Can we see DK push onto the point? No one's up here. And no one's going to make it. It's not wow. going to matter. And suddenly it's three to two, two. And a whole new game for MTS here, who maybe remembered who they are and have sort of pressed the button to uh, to get going here. I like the move of Skyrolla getting on Cliff, and I think that MTS has to maybe uh, use that a little bit more and uh, maybe get more players up on that forward Cliff. We'll see how this mid plays out so far. Uh, that's something they haven't seen, and that can be very effective. When you have a heavy shutting down that area, it can work quite well. We have a hard blue down already, but eight players up for this MTS team, and so they're going to try to take this first cap without heals, as we have a... Uh, that will be going down too, so both meds down. DM fight. Yeah, and right, right happened, what happened there is Zan went down very early on. You know, their game plan is going across really well. I'm looking at the stats right now. Again, Zan and Alpha are basically neck and neck for damage done. But I just want to give a couple stats here real quick. Marissa, 21 kills. The highest kills on DK, 11. Squid with 19 kills. Again, both of them almost double fragging the highest scoring player on uh, DK. And I think this also is in part to Axiomatic being focused down a lot more. He's yep. barely done anything the second half. So Zan and Axiomac both uh, struggling here. But as I say that, Zan, I'm sorry, Skyrola and Alpha go down to here. got a big double, yeah, the heavy and the demo. And Marissa went down to Axiomatic with a big headshot. It looks like we have a pause on the server as DK takes their first cap. And they're looking very strong right now. Sig Afu. Yes, they are. Well, I mean, this is where DK has shown their strength is to retake the point, push 
push back with aggression, and especially when you don't have a demo man or heavy, in particular demo man to contest this point. I mean, this is a de very demo friendly map because the way that the since it's not a flat surface, you can kind of you want those arcing shots. Whereas like you know with other classes, it's just not quite as friendly uh, to be able to stand back and uh, span the point. And uh, yeah, it's just it's been a good it's been a good game out of here so far. And I mean, it's pretty crazy. MTS taking two rounds back. Only yep. one more. If they win this round, it goes into sudden death. It will indeed, and certainly that's what MTS is looking for. We mentioned it already, the way that the brackets work. The loser of this match will drop down, face the winner of tonight's Street Hoops and ET match, and they will still have a chance to make it to Grand Finals. Uh, whoever wins that one, then, will come back. And so we're back live here. Akuma's in behind, and I think Akuma wants to try to... Ooh, get a little equalizer here, and oh, whips on the stab on the medic, and Akuma goes down, so, so much for that. Uh, I want to make a reminder, too, guys, if you're just tuning in, uh, the TF2 latest update sort of broke some of our plugins. That's why not all the plugins are on, so apologies, but we've had a hell of a match. Uh, what do you see here, Sigafu? Uh, actually, Harblu went down there sometime. I didn't see exactly to what, but then Deer going big again, taking down the heavy. Waiting for our HUDs to reload after this pause, and DK is doing a good job of holding on to this point. Uh, but yeah, just nothing really going MTS's way right now. They lost a few big heavy classes, as a matter of fact, including the Fat Man. Skyroll and those guys going to get their respawns. They get the fast respawns, of course, because uh, right now they don't on the point. DK do axiomatic on that 20 second respawn timer. Um, looking like right now, I mean, the time is, is starting to get away from MTS. And the Uber's coming in for them. They're going to back up. Harblu's going to keep his life here, hopefully. But I think they're getting ready for a push right after this. Gonna avoid some spam as Patsy goes flying. Oh, boy. Danger here for Harblu. He's down at... Oh, boy. He's at 90%, but the spy was coming in, but he will stay alive. He's just kind of stuck behind the rock now. Time is getting away from them. It's a minute 35 left for DK. And remember, if they take a round, they will win this. It's time for uh, Harps to do something. A really good job. Look at... Uh, it looks like the pause happened there. The MTS retook this point. Oh, close to somebody to st stand on the point. You're losing every second now. It's just a lost point. Finally, Uber is coming off, but they still have not captured the point. Look at this. It is just staying there. And look at 10, 15 seconds off the point right there. Wow. From just not focusing the point. And actually, a lot of players down for MTS. They're going to have to back up, or they're going to lose a lot more. And they have the slow respawns right now due to not controlling the point. And then, I'm sorry, DK is going to be able to take this point back very, very quickly on blue. Yeah, no Engineer up for MTS, Squid is down as well, uh, Kuma just getting his respawn, and oh boy. I've got to say, in terms of time right now, it doesn't look great for MTS. They're going to have to pull off some big picks. I think it's time now for the classes like the Soldiers, get Remedy to do something, Marissa, get uh, Kuma in there as well. They're going to have to do it uh, as, the, as the Uber's coming in. Somebody on MTS has got to go huge right now, and it's got to be right now. They cannot wait. Well, Kuma did take down Axiomatic there again. It looks like we have another pause uh, coming in. Um, and Axiomatic, so yeah, I mean, I think that's one of the things that we're seeing is that Akuma is doing a good job of focusing down Axiomatic, which then allows Marissa to freely snipe without having to worry about uh, being taken out. But yeah, I mean, it's... I'm just kind of looking at this, like, what are we going to see next? Hard Blue has the charge just about ready to go. They have the cap time. Uh, and it's down pretty low. I mean, they're going to take back this capture time probably with like maybe 30 seconds left on the clock. It's going to be it's going to be a nail biter, that's for sure. Because DK, I mean, they're sitting pretty. Har MTS is basically have to play the rest of this round perfectly, and then that goes into overtime into sudden death. I should say. Yeah. It's all or nothing right now. They they well, need to win this round. Correct me if I'm wrong, Sigafu. The ideal outcome right now for MTS once we're back from pause, they want to take the point without Ubering if they can. They want to get some kills without Ubering and really sort of hold on to that Uber for as long as they can. Is that pretty much the best possible outcome right now after this pause for MTS? Uh yes and no. I mean I think that, you know, if they do Uber Metaway is actually if you see his position right now, he's right behind uh, the point. So he's a little bit caught in. Maybe they can get Squid to chase him down and get a kill. Metaway is only at 9% uh, Uber charge. So if MTS does Uber across the point, which I, ex I just knowing how Harblue likes to play, and it, he's probably just going to do that. He, they're probably going to get very aggressive and push across point. Um, even if they don't get Metaway, they're only going to be at like a 20% disadvantage. And here we get the unpause coming back in. 
And uh, here comes the Uber Arm all the way across pressure the point. Too. Remedy's up on that rock, pressuring uh, the medic as well. And so Remedy doing a great job to sort of bully the combo of DK out of there. And he's going to oh jump boy. now. Oh boy. Makes a play for the med, but doesn't get him. Gets stabbed by Big Deer. And uh, so yeah, here we go. The point is owned right now by MTS. Uh, my time in my HUD didn't reset. Everything else reset. I, I don't know if we're in overtime. Is that is that no, zero no, accurate? No, no. So right now we're at 37 seconds to DK and a minute 40 in taking off uh, for right. MTS here with uh, Meta Way with about a 10% Uber advantage. So certainly uh, it's about a minute or so, less than a minute now in time. MTS have done. Uh, I mean that's that was a. Pretty fantastic outcome for them. They'll be able to sort of hold now. They're holding in this corner, not holding on cliff like we've seen them do. As the spy comes in and gets caught. Very lucky there for Harb who's staying alive. Katsy kind of shows her frustration and goes down. Oh boy. Harbs has no one really to Uber. I mean, he's got a demo, but no one else to sort of follow it up. It's right now just Harblue, Marissa, and Alpha trying to do their thing as some red players getting to respawns. And time is ticking down. There's going to be no Uber coming. It's time right now for MDS to just, oh boy, make your plan and move in now. You're out of time. Yeah, they. one of the pick classes needs to go big, take down Zan or somebody equally important here. Um, as we have D MTS actually taking the point back for free. Five seconds left on the clock. This is actually nice. kind of useful as they do not have, uh, they can actually have a couple seconds to lose the point and take it back. Actually, Metal Wave yep. went down there in that exchange somehow. Oh, boy. And Harblu with a 70% Uber advantage, one point left on the clock, but this is only going to be enough time for Meta Way to get one Uber charge back oh, up. He actually might the quick fix. Let's see what he's on. Get your hashtags ready uh, out there in chat. The comeback might be real, ladies and gents, as we've got about uh, 47, 45 seconds here for MTS, and... Uh, they're holding tight, and so on the side of DK now, it's up to their pick classes to see what they can do. The Spy has got to try to get in, that's Deer. Let's see what they can put together here to sort of ruin the comeback for this MTS team. Deer is in, he's going after Marissa, but gets taken out by Squitter, who spots him out right away. Gek there is on this, the uh, point right now, and so they have no choice but to block. MTS has to come out and just block it. And Zan so running their for his life, yeah. So uh, sorry, no, so go you're, for it. Yeah, DK uh, running ran up to the point. Uber got exchanged. I'm sorry, you shouldn't say exchanged because really it was just popped by MTS. And DK, look at their health. They're so Spam low. Fest. Everybody is dying. <laughs> Only one alive for DK. Could this one be it? Respawn. Is this it? And four, three. Hashtag comeback. Can we hear it? Three straight for MTS. We're to looking take it to at a sudden death. Looking at a sudden death, golden cap, however you want to call it. The winner of this next round. Oh boy. Unbelievable! I was watching Big Spam Fest coming in the Engineer with his shot. He had a big hand in that uh, slaughter at the very end of that round. So an unbelievable turn of events here. Taking three rounds in a row on their last legs is Menace to Society. Oh, sick. Boy, buddy, what's going on here? Is this real? Is this a dream? Hello? Did I bite your finger? Hello? Hello? <laughs> Where, okay. Look at my hands. Look at my hands. So, so I think what happened there is MTS1 stepping up to the plate, but I think they did exactly what they needed to do. And there's one player I did not talk about focusing in the mid-game, uh, or the mid-talk, which was they needed to focus Zan down, which is what they did, and they did a pretty good job of it for most of those rounds. But Axiomatic has just been dying left and right to the spy and just getting constantly yeah. harassed. And I talked about this you know, a little bit before. Axiomatic is one of those players who, if you get him rattled, you, you know, he'll stay rattled. Like, if you get him frustrated, he'll either, like, step up or just go into a tilt. And it looks like right now he's kind of going into a tilt. He's only got 17 frags compared to Marissa's 35 frags. Marissa's out sniping 2-1, to one, topping the frag board, 35 frags. The closest on DK is 19. So that's 16 more frags than the so closest yeah. person on DK. It's crazy. Cer certainly a lot of the uh, DK classes are going to have to pick it up and... You know, uh, it's all or nothing here now. They've really got to outperform. How about Squidder, by the way? Looking at Squid, who is obviously such a well-known Sixes player, plays at the top level of Sixes in ECA and Sivo. He had a huge half there. 26 frags was second uh, among anybody. Spamfest, a good half as well, doing a lot of work.
Yeah, I mean, Engineers, they can really make or break a game. It's kind of one of those hidden things. I shouldn't say that. It's like not a, like the big thing, but a good Engineer is going to help you out a lot, especially if they can get that, you know, kind of that sneak damage. It's that damage you don't really see. You know, it just kind of helps ping everybody else down and kind of gets them across the point. But Squid is just one of those scouts. He loves to chase down frags. He loves to do all of that. And yep. It looks like we're getting another crash uh, on this server again. So I'm kind of curious if we'll switch servers, if we'll stay on here. But uh, we'll keep bringing you coverage either way as we come into this golden cap, this sudden death, this game. This game, Winner. this life, this amazing, amazing uh, video game going on. I'm getting word actually from a member of DK that their server crashed. So, uh, I don't know. Get a new server. Maybe if uh, DK move on and they uh, end up the grand champions of this season, they can get a, a server that doesn't crash every 10 minutes. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Maybe if anyone out there wants to donate a server to, uh, to DK, get in touch. Good time to mention, guys, uh, and to talk about something that's going on in UGC right now. They are having a raffle, a giveaway uh, leading up to their grand finals. We talked about it a bit earlier. Now, if you don't want to listen to me ramble, you can just mute your thing right now and go to the UGC forums and read about it. But basically, you're giving away up to 200 bucks worth in prizes uh, for uh, a bunch of different things uh, for users to just make a video talking about predictions of winners or talking about their season, giving away Steam games for that. You can write an article or predictions. You can just talk about your season. That sounds really easy to me, to just make a forum post talking about your season. Uh, if you do it, you're entered to win items. And as a matter of fact, as of tonight's cast, anyone that goes and enters the Just Be Yourself raffle, where you just talk about your season or give ideas for UGC, is adding $1 to the raffle prize pool, up to 100 bucks. So that means the prizes could climb up to $300. All you have to do is go and post your entry on the UGC forums or teamfortress.tv forums. And that's all you have to do. It seems easy to me. Almost too easy, Sikafu. Is this an unfair an unfair <laughs> thing? Too easy to enter? Um, I don't think that's a thing, but we'll go with it. You know, it, it, it's easy money. You know, everybody should be doing it um, and just get some more, uh, more content out there for UGC. It'd be great. Yeah, the bottom line is UGC are looking for feedback. They're looking to interact with uh, people, hear how the season are, uh, or how their seasons were, and, and look for... Uh, input and so uh, go and do it and you could win stuff that's about as uh, as easy as we can boil it down but at any rate we are uh, waiting to start here this final round the golden cap round the the overtime period what are some other uh, what, what else do you want to call it sudden death as you said it I like sudden death you know yeah. but well I mean it's kind of in that way golden cap kind of I guess you can put it in different ways that's a euro thing Euro, it is a Euro thing. Well, yeah, let's break it down. So, for the people just joining us right now, coming into this game, MTS, seemingly the favorites. DK, a newer gold team, second season in UGC. MTS, uh, I keep getting confused when I hear that because they did not start the configs. MTS, uh, the team well known, struggles on this map. MTS goes down 0 to 3 in the first half. They come back 3 to 0 in the second half. And now we're taking it to the finals. And whoever wins this game, guaranteed a second spot. Guaranteed a spot in the grand finals. It's been, a, yep. it's been an intense game. I don't know. What have you uh, been seeing in this game? What are you looking forward to this final round, Get Away? Well, I'm just surprised at the outcome. I'll be real honest, Sigafu. Anyone that's been here since the start of the uh, start of the cast, we were giving this one away. We were throwing the cast away, Sigafu. <laughs> we thought we were going to be in bed by now. We thought it was going to be a clean 4 nothing. We were telling people... Good chance you're going to be able to go watch the uh, second match on XTV2. But uh, no, absolutely not. And I, as much as I love MTS, Sigafu, I, I don't know if I was expecting this myself. I really was not. Uh, something just seemed off with MTS, but they have gotten it together. They have had standout performances that they were lacking in the first half. And they've pulled even. Uh, they find a way to, they found, sorry, a way to shut down Zan, the demo man for... Uh, Dunning-Kruger effect, DK, and they've had just fantastic performances out of, I mean, geez, just so many people. Harblue's been playing, playing a lot better this second half. Riss has been fantastic on Sniper. Uh, boy, oh boy, who else? Squid has had a fantastic sort of Sixes-esque style to his play, just very aggressive, and uh, all around, MPS have turned it on, and if I had to predict this one of who's going to win, I wouldn't be able to say, call it out in chat, guys, who do you think's going to win? Uh, as we're getting ready here to go live any moment. Who do you think's gonna win, Sig? Off the record. Off the record? Who do Off I... the record on this cast. 
You know what? I, I, I actually, I can't, I literally can't decide. Because I think mm -hmm. it's so close, you know? I think MTS definitely has a little bit of an advantage coming into it. Uh, just because of the fact that they won the last three rounds, they have that momentum, they understand. The real question is, MTS came in and adapted from that first half to the second right. half. Can DK do the same? Can they come in? Can they adapt? Can they figure out what's going wrong with their game plan? I, I don't know really what DK can really do to change, because it seems like M I'm sorry, DK was successful because of Xan, because of Axiomatic going right. base, because of Deer. Those all, they've all been shut down in the second half. So, that, you know, MTS really shut down, you know, can, so I guess it really would be a question of can DK shut down Marissa? Can they shut down Squid? I don't know. We'll see it coming into the second half. Uh, yeah, I mean, as, yeah. you know, I'm wondering what kinds of changes we might, uh, each of these teams might be able to make because in the first half, what we saw was a lot of medics going down, a lot of medic deaths. And so we saw a little more of, a little more cautious medic play. I saw Katsy especially sort of babysit Harblue's back, so to speak. Velocity played very well uh, as well as Pyro. What do you think it is? Do you think it's just that pick classes have to go big, or is there some larger, more meta sort of uh, style change that one of these teams should be making for the second half? Or maybe, I mean, uh, maybe even a crits play, maybe. I would be interested to see a crits play with how well Zan's been uh, playing this game. Maybe try to take that swing to your advantage. Um, I mean, DK does like to play aggressive, and I actually just rechecking the stats as well. Harblu last game died. I'm sorry, last half died four times. Metaway died ten. Wow. The first, the first half they were virtually even, and uh, Harblu, you know, you kind of talked about his style uh, in the game, kind of being a little bit afraid. And I don't think I, I wouldn't describe Harblu as necessarily a little bit afraid, as so much as he just. He likes to stay alive. Like that's right. the, that's the annoying part about Har Blue. Is and it's it's a good thing and it's a, it's a detriment to his team sometimes. He likes to back out early sometimes just to get out. And he but he also is that guy who's running the forward trying to get his team to go across with an Uber. He kind of yeah. plays both sides of it. But he is definitely a guy who's like, okay, I'm gonna try to stay alive. And the second half it also worked out for him because he yeah. died six less times. Yeah, yeah, I would agree with that. I would sort of add on to it and say that. I think that what I've been seeing is that Harbaugh is sort of scrambling to get in packs of players. He's scrambling to get with his pyro, get with, you know, soldier or heavy. And when he's alone, he gets out. But that's a very safe thing. Maybe that comes from his sixes play, especially on this map. But we'll see what's going to come. Uh, it's time to go, though. I'm going to be watching Zan because I think the pressure is now back on Zan to have a half like he did in the first half. He's been doing okay on these mids, but like we've said a billion times, the mid is not everything on this uh, map. And uh, the big picks from these snipers or spies might decide how, who gets the first cap. There's Marissa right off the bat, actually Axiomatic answering with his own headshot. Carl and Squid going down for their respective teams. Uh, still only, well, there's four, ooh, four players down now for DK, and it looks like Xan backing up, and they're going to get out of this one. First cap, this MTS. Yeah, and I want to give a big shout out to Remedy right there. He actually did a really good job of distracting. I mean, I think that's one of the things that we don't talk about a lot when it comes to soldiers in this game. And just to say, Axiomatic takes down the heavy, trying to oh, run yeah. away. And Harblu actually is getting caught in here, going to get forced actually. And let's see if Metaway is going to be able to hold on to this Uber as uh, MTS is running across the point. Finally, the Uber does come out for DK. Uh, and it looks like they are going to be able to clean people up. Is Harblu, where is he right now? Did he get out alive? Yes, he did. Um, as a lot of the MTS went down, kind of trying to save that point. But uh, what I was going to speak to before was Remedy did a good job of just jumping behind and having players focus him on that mid fight, allowing his team to kind of push across the point. It was a really good job by him. It was a good uh, job by Axiomatic. You caught the headshot on Skyroll. Right before that, though, he actually sniped down uh, Marissa. Which, again, we talked about how just the presence of a sniper alone can really shut down large areas of this map. Uh, DK so sort of holding back, and I'm looking at how they're holding. They're holding on this back right-hand side, Sigafu. What do you think of holding in that area? That's pretty wide open spaces. They're getting mopped up right now. Yeah, that's when you're holding against the house area, you don't really have a great escape room. And you also have that backboard for the splash damage. And that's what we saw as Alpha came over the top. I'm sorry, and then, uh, what do you want to call it? Remedy came from the flank and just cleaned everybody up. Medway was fortunate enough to stay alive, but MTS retaking the point and now has a 30-second advantage on the clock here. But we do have Medway with the Uber, so we'll see how he's going to push up with that. Here they come across the point. Zan jumping across, trying to get some stickies down onto Harblue. Doesn't, is not able to connect anybody and not able to really get too many people with it. And Marissa 
getting Big. a snipe on Josh with the Machina there, and uh, here we come in, heavy around the point. He's gonna get cleaned up, and DK... Oh, Akuma. Oof. I gotta give big ups to my man, uh, Akuma, who's doing such a fantastic job. Axiomatic, the sniper, just had Akuma all over him, and just could not do anything at all. It was just completely out of the fight. Akuma then jumped in a big pile of people, went for the big stab on the med, but... Playing pretty good, uh, not only distraction, but, uh, and down goes Axio there to a big Marissa headshot, but pretty good spy play out of uh, Kuma so far. I haven't seen as much of Deer, but he's got the potential. Let's see if he can put something together. Yeah, the other thing we haven't seen a lot this game, which I think is kind of interesting, in particular on Viaduct, is not a lot of medic shots by the sniper. Like, the medic has not been going down to the sniper. Medic's yeah. playing very smart away from the sight lines. That means you're having really yep. good communication out of your team. Metal we about to get his Uberies at 95% as they're holding in this house, and I mean, I don't know, is, is this some kind of new thing holding uh, around the side of house? I've never seen that, especially not in Platinum Sigafu. I've covered and uh, even played a lot of Highlander. I, I don't think that's the smartest place. We've got Ubers going on right now. I guess we can touch on that in a second. Big shot yeah. there on Josh by Marissa. But, I mean, what's up with that? Why I mean, Metal we goes down, and so there'll be no heals for the guys in red who really kind of need it right now with only four of them up. What, what's up with that hold? Is that a valid hold? Yeah, holding in-house actually is kind of a, uh, if I can dare say, uh, a hind thing. Uh, that was actually kind of what Syndicate liked to do uh, when they held, because you can't get bombed while holding inside of house, basically. Right. And Remedy, as we're seeing this game, is doing crazy amounts of work. Is actually is able to take down DK's medic. And actually, Harblu went down to a stab during that whole exchange here. And MTS actually re-pushing. But look at this. 30 seconds left on the point. Yeah, DK needs to check. stop this point. And uh, here comes DK getting very aggressive. Engineer on the, uh, sorry, Demo Man and the Spy Ooh. on the Soldier. But Remedy's not going to go down there. And, Remedy's uh, staying alive and got a big error uh, shot on Gekner, as a matter of fact. And I'm sort of seeing, uh, dare I say it, Sigafu, uh, another uh, big spy. shot there on Axiomatic. Dare I say it, as we get the cap here, we're sort of seeing DK panic and sort of bleed out like we saw MTS doing in the first half. Yeah, I mean, they kind of needed to stop that cap, but obviously, yeah, they lost a little bit too many players in this. I mean, fortunately, the medic was able to stay alive, and just as I say that, the oh, caster's boy. cursed. Akuma with the big stab. Ten seconds remaining. DK needs to get all out aggressive. You have nothing left to lose. Your season is on the line to get into the grand finals. Here they do. Well, they they got do it. recapture it. But they have so many deaths, and their slow respawns is going to work against them. Look at all 12 seconds, basically. And here comes MTS. They're going to start pushing across the point as Harblu is just starting to get that Uber up and scout dancing, oh, but he boy. goes down. And MTS, four seconds on the clock. They're just going to recapture this slowly, but. Are they actually? Oh, I should say that. I don't know. Akuma's still out there. The Uber now finally coming Cut in. Uh, they can't cap a while Uber, but I think they're going to clean up enough players here that it'll be just a wash. We're going to have two players left up for the uh, DK team, and, and wow. that's going to be it. So moving on and winning four rounds in a row. Menace to society. Proving, I guess, that uh, they do belong in this upper bracket, and they're not going to get eliminated by Dunning-Kruger effect. So they will move on. MTS are going to move on to the grand final no matter what. DK are going to move down, and they will uh, go to the lower bracket finals and still have a chance to move on to these grand finals. Oh, boy. I, I'm, I'm shocked. I'm a little shell-shocked, and that must be how DK's feeling, too. What do you think? I... I can only imagine. I mean, DK, I mean, it's such, like every round you lose, and I think that's the thing is like when you start to feel that momentum go against you, just that life force is sucked out of you and your play style, like everything just kind of gets sucked out of you. And, you know, just big ups to MTS for, I mean, how many times have we seen a team come back from the brink? Like, I mean, 0 and 3, I've seen that one time in my life, and that was ET versus uh, 20B, I believe, last season, or whatever they were called, Gentlemen's Club, I guess. But this is yep. such an unusual thing to be able to come back. I mean, that shows you, I mean, MTS, as we talked about, is a, uh, what do you want to call it? Like a very long-standing team. A lot of their players are very experienced, and we saw that here today. They went down three rounds. They didn't get freaked out. You know what they got? They got focused. They figured out the puzzle of the game of how they needed to adjust. They did just that, and man, did they look good in those final four rounds, taking it four straight to send them to the grand finals. Yeah, an absolutely unbelievable performance. Hopefully you saw it all here with us. Uh, if not, the VOD will certainly be up. I'm looking at the stats now a little bit. 
one number I see in such a short round that stands out is Marissa's KAD was a four, a big four in a round as short as that. Uh, Axiomatic, pretty close though as well. Six headshots versus Marissa's seven. But uh, I really think that that was a team effort. I don't think that that was any individual performer that time for MTS. I think that MTS put the pieces together perfectly and and executed. Would you agree, or did you see standouts? Uh, well, I do want to say Marissa really stood out, though, for that game. I mean, yeah. I mean, looking at that, she actually top damaged for that second half. I'm sorry, for that final round. She actually top damaged... Yep. For the entire game, she actually tied Zan, a demo man, a sniper yep. tied a demo man yep. for top damage in a round. That's insane. Not um, using a secondary either. She doesn't use SMG or any craziness like that. It's all the sniper rifle and a machina at that. Yeah, good luck to MTS sleeping tonight with all the adrenaline pumping through their veins after this game. I can only imagine. Absolutely, and so, uh, like we said, moving on, ET won the lower bracket match, and so they will be facing off uh, on this Thursday against Dunning-Kruger Effect, who got dropped out of this one. Winner of that, then, will move on to uh, go to the Grand Finals, and the Thursday match, that will be on Viaduct as well. We will uh, hopefully be bringing you, I'm sure we'll be bringing that to you here on XTV. But uh, in the meantime, uh, congratulations, I guess, to uh, MTS, who move on. And uh, what else, Sigafu? Did you have anything else? Or are we we good? Um, Shout outs. <laughs> well, let me ask you. Did you want to? Did we want to do post game interviews or? Do we um, want to? Of course, yeah. Why okay, not? let me. S here, do you want to talk for a minute? I'll get them coordinated. I was born to talk, Sigafu. So uh, we're gonna try to get somebody in here uh, to talk if we can. One thing that I sort of want to say is that uh, certainly we saw some of the sixes' strength here, maybe from MTS and. Two things that have always been said about MTS, one that I agree with and one that I disagree with. Certainly a lot of people say that MTS, they, they get so far, but in the end they, they get shut down uh, toward the end. They're sort of second place many seasons in a row. That's, that's just fact. Some people say, though, that they're at a bit of a disadvantage in Highlander. That's, that's over now. Can we, can we call that over? I think that MTS have proven this season that they are a top team no matter what map they play. Um, I think it is silly at this point to say that, you know, they're, they're at a disadvantage against any of these pure Highlander teams. I don't think that's a thing anymore. If you look down through their history, you know, they beat DK on Steel this season, for example. They had wins on, you know, uh, maps like Upward, uh, Asheville, uh, two on Upward, as a matter of fact, against 20B, both of them against 20B, so, uh... That's just something I wanted to get out there. Let's, let's as casters, stop talking about how MTS are a Sixes team. They may be, but I think they're very strong at Highlander as well. Uh, so we are just going to... Yeah, up? we can just we can just wrap up. I, I'm they're not getting in here quickly enough, so we can just... Uh, okay. We'll just call it... Uh, we'll call it... But we'll, I'm sure we'll have some uh, nice interviews at, for the uh, Grand Finals. <laughs> Absolutely. So uh, look for Oh, wait, it, here we go. Uh, oh, we got someone. We have Mr. Harblue uh, join us. We have Remedy as well. We have Marissa joining us here as well. Uh, is anyone else coming, guys, or is it just you? No. Just us. Nope! Just them. So, guys, uh, congrats on one of the most thrilling uh, matches that we've seen in a while, probably, on uh, Viaduct taking four in a row. Are you guys fired up, too? Are you, like, bouncing off the walls? We're Take getting it away, tonight. Remedy. What's that? I'm really excited right now. Remedy sounds the most excited of, of everybody. This is actually this is actually the most excited that I've ever heard him. This is he should have heard Remedy during the match. It sounded like he hated life. He was just he just doesn't have fun ever. I'm on the edge of my seat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, we're all pretty excited about that. I think <laughs> we're just more excited not having to play on Thursday. Really, our team it's hard enough getting nine players on with us, and getting I think getting nine on Thursday was going to be impossible. So that's probably the best part of all of it. Absolutely. Well, uh, I'll, uh, let, me, let me grab first question here. It was a huge team performance, obviously, by all of you guys, and I think we have fantastic things to say about all you three, I mean, as well as the rest of the team. I want to ask, though, Marissa, my God, all pretty much the second two rounds, you were the beast of the match. You had as much damage in the overtime round as their demo. How did you feel? Was this one of your sort of top matches in a while, do you feel like, or was it just another day at the office? This was probably the best match I've ever played in my life, so. What inspired that? Did you, did it just kind of come out of nowhere, or did you just start getting warmed up coming into the second half? 
Um, I did well in uh, pre-game scrims. I just didn't really want. I I didn't want DK to win. All the inspiration I need, you need, I guess. Well, what was your discussion that you guys had in that halftime, kind of between the first and second half, that really uh, set you guys to get that three win streak to take it to uh, to the overtime? So our whole team was pretty silent going into half. Like everyone was down because we knew we threw a couple rounds that first half. I think like the second round, we had like four seconds left, and we just like threw it. So we knew that we could. It could have been a lot closer to the score. And I, don't know, I basically made sure everyone stayed calm. And I was like. Uh, Viaduct is the one map that you can easily... Uh, yow, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, looks like our mumble crashed, uh, which unfortunately means that that is probably it for the interviews. Uh, apologies uh, to the players uh, who came in and are trying to get this going on. A uh, special shout out to Sigafu and Ghetto Whale uh, for getting things going on tonight. They did an excellent job. Uh, but unfortunately, without the mumble and without the players, I think that is going to do it for us. So, uh, thanks for watching, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be back on Thursday night. Uh, Kip with a, a to be determined uh, co caster. Uh, we'll be doing the action Thursday night, 9 30 p.m. Eastern. Uh, once again, sorry for cutting off MTS there, but congratulations to them for making Grand Finals for the second season in a row. Thanks so much for watching, ladies and gentlemen. I am Eckstein, and we'll catch you guys next time. Peace out.